Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Um, today I'm just going to do a very quick video on categorical encoding. This is a very important topic when we come to machine learning because machine learning models are not going to take your data in the way you've pulled them. You need to think about it in terms of how a computer reads data and that's mostly in ones and zeros and in numerical form. So if you have say categories, you have say text, you want to convert that into numbers in a way a computer can understand. And luckily enough, um, there's a very easy way to do this in Pandas. There is different ways to do it and um, different approaches in scikit-learn and everything. But today I just want to go over quickly the simplest approach, which is um, pd.getdummies. So to start off, we're going to do our normal imports. This is our Pandas and our NumPy. So we brought those in, that's fine. I'm gonna get this data from the GitHub. This is data sitting on my GitHub. And it just means that when you, um, if you choose to go and run this uh, notebook, that you all you have to do is go and open the notebook and the data is gonna come in. So I'm using this wget and I'm getting the GitHub raw content here. So just gonna play this. And this has now brought my GitHub content into the Google Colab. Um, and let's just take a look at that. So this is just, I think it's BMW data, BMW sales data from used cars. And I'm just using this to show you, I don't know, how to investigate the data and see which of these um, data points should be turned into a category. So right away, I can see that, you know, the data model isn't going to take five series in text um, in to do a classification or regression. So I need to convert that straight away. Year is a number, so it will take this number, but it will compare it to, you know, 2000 and 2000 to 2014. That's a 14 point difference where in this case, it actually is a big difference. So it's better to have these encoded, these years encoded as a category. Price is a continuous um, number. We don't want to encode those. We might normalize them or something like that and um, if it makes the model better we can go over that in another video but we wouldn't really be changing this and um, automatic this looks like a, a text category as well we can we can turn that into a um we can turn that into a zero or one we've got mileage looks like continuous again we've got fuel type which has to be converted we have tax which may be converted we'll have a look we've got miles per gallon which also could be converted we can have a look at that um, and then we have engine size, which will also probably be converted. Just really depends on how many um, engine sizes there are in the data set. So what we can do first is let's investigate the data. So I'm going to run a quick df.info. And again, df is what I brought this BMW data in as. So we can see from this that there's um, 10, 000, over 10,000 entries in here. And we've got our data, all our different data types in here. So if you've got a number that you want to change to a, categor a, a categorical encoded variable, what you need to do is you need to change that um, to a category type. But first, let's look through all of these columns. We'll look through all the value counts of them to see how many separate values there are in each column. Because if there's like 10,000 10, here, if there's over 50 or something like that, you're not going to make a new column um, for each of the 50. Um, and I'll show you that these new columns later will become a lot clearer. So what we're doing here is we're getting, first of all, we're getting a column list. So I'm taking a column list equals df.columns. So essentially df.columns is these as a list, all these columns here, the column names. And then I'm running a for loop. So I'm saying for i in column list. So this will run through each of these column values here. And it'll just print out the first one is just printing out the name of the column and then skipping a line and then printing out df and this is the column dot value counts. So essentially that will give us a list of all the values in each column. So I'm going to run this cell and you can see from here we can have a look through all our different columns. So first off is model values and um, we have a, a number of different models probably is OK to fit into um, probably is OK to fit into a category. I could see this being binned further into is it like a hatchback or is it a large car or something like that but for the sake of this tutorial let's just keep them let's just we'll turn this into a, a separate column for each one of these in the data set 
Next, we have year. Um, and this is 20 different years and more than 20 different years. It goes back to 1996. It looks to be 2025 or something like that. We'll also use these as a, as a um, each of these to a column. We may bin these in terms of we could have like cars before 2005 or something like that into one uh, data set. Like when you're going through these and you're trying to categorize them, you have to think in terms of the subject matter expert, right? You'd go to a subject matter expert and goes, okay, which of these cars would be kind of similar prices? Um, and if they are kind of similar prices, if you could take say 97 and 98 and think, all right, there's not too much difference. You can bin them as one, um, as one category. So the next thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at price. And we can see that there's 3,777 different prices. And it's a continuous value, so we're expecting that. So essentially, we're not going to bin these um, into categories. These, This will just be the continuous value in the data set. Because I'm assuming if we're looking at prices, that's what we're trying to uh, calculate maybe with a regression or something like that. And then this is a perfect one to bin. Uh, are a perfect one to change into a, an encoded category because there's three the semi auto, automatic, and manual. There's a good spread between the three of those in the data set. This is perfect, so we're definitely going to encode that. And um, we have the mileage again, lots of different um, lots of different values. This is a continuous value. We're not going to make this into a category and then encode it. And uh, we have fuel type here. This is perfect again for a categorical encoding. We have tax values here, probably just a few too many. What we could do there is we could cut these into categories and then categorize them that way. And I'm going to show you this uh, later on. I'll show you one value which we're we're going to do, but we could also do it with, um, we could also do it with these tax values and change that into a category if we wanted. So the next one is um, MPG values. That's miles per gallon. Again, we could cut these into different bins and then then change them into a category, but we're not going to do that for the sake of this tutorial. And finally, we have engine size, which um, can go in each can go in as a column each, but probably would be better to be binned as well. So I've mentioned the binning a lot, and we'll, we're going to come to that very very soon, and I'll show you how to do that. But first of all, for the conversion to category. We've picked engine size, fuel type, year, and model as four things that we want to convert into category and then change in the data set. So what we can do with these is that I've made a new list called conversion list, and I've done another for loop here. So it's for I in conversion list. So I is, it'll run through each one of these. And we're going DFI equals DFI dot as type category. So essentially what we're doing is when we went up here and did our info last time, it's a good bit up here. These data types are all set. None of these are category. And what we do by going down here and changing, converting to categories, we're changing the data types to category. And then when we go to run df.getdummies, it'll take everything which is marked as a category and then produce an extra column for them. So if I run this, I've now changed these four engine size, field type, year, and model to categories. For the text encoded ones you don't really need to do this uh, it's more just for a numeric definitely for the year here and um, and the engine size and um, so but i thought what's the point in not doing it you know um that we might as well be consistent and um, like we, we we lost nothing by converting them into a category so when i've converted these let's look at df.head and you'll see that nothing really has changed so these are underlying, these are now underlying categories. So this is, is a category, this is a category type, engine size is a category type, um, and fuel type is a category type. But we haven't really done anything with those. Transmission, we haven't changed it to, to a category type, and we also want to convert that. But you'll see that the get dummies will convert that because it is a text field. Um, so this is the magic now how it works, right? So we have df2, which is a new data frame, equals df. So it's taken our original data frame, which is df, and then converting all the um, all the categorical columns um, into 
a selection of columns. And this will be better explained when I actually run this out. So you can see that all the models now are their own column. And there's a, a column for each model, right? So lots of columns in here, probably a good idea to actually um, group certain ones together before we change this. But you'll see that each, each of the observations only has one of the models selected. So the, it's, it's called a sparse matrix, ones and zeros. So we know this is a five series and it's not a four series, it's not a six series, it's not a seven series. And you'll see that's replicated through the years as well. So what year is this car now? It is a 2014 car. So it's only represented one of the years in this sparse matrix. The transmission also, it is a automatic transmission. So there's a one, it's not a manual transmission. It's not a semi-auto transmission and fuel type is diesel and then finally if we find an engine size engine size is 2.0 so that's really like the, the categorical get dummies right it just lengthens out the data set and puts it into a more computer readable format but we probably have too many in each of the in most of the categories here we probably have a few too many uh, observations so we need to nearly group these similar ones together so for engine size i'll just show you how to bin this quickly right so for engine size i am going df.engine bin so i'm creating a new column and i'm going to say pd.cut df.engine size 4. so essentially what i'm doing is i'm taking all the engine sizes and i'm creating four bins for them and then i'm going to um, encode that in get dummies so if we look at this here now I've binned my engine sizes. So what I've done here is I've taken the engine size here and I've binned it into four. So it's 0.0066 to 1.65. That looks to be an, an anomaly there in the data set, but we could look at that later on. Then it's been 1.65 to 3.3, 3.3 to 4.95, and finally 4.95 to 6.6. .6. I've then gone ahead and dropped the original engine size column because I don't want the two data sets there. And then I've done my pd.getdummies again, and it's come up with four columns instead of up here. We had a lot more than that columns for engine size. So you could likely do that for engine size. You could probably do it for a year. Um, but for cars, like the, the recent years will really be very different from each other. So it's really, you'd have to go through the data step by step and group similar things together, then put them into bins, either manually in pandas or from this really useful function, uh, df, uh, this pd.cut. And another thing you can do here, so if I just undo this, we can also put labels into, um, into pd.cut. So I've put labels bin one, two, three, and four, if you don't want to have just the, the intervals in here. So I'm gonna run this again. And I have engine bin bin one engine bin bin two three and four so i have labels in here so maybe a little bit easier to read for the user um and and that's really how you do it so very simple video today all i really wanted to show you was the pd.cut and also the pd.get dummies so you can turn your data into machine readable data that you can then put into a machine learning model Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time for another Python tutorial.